Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today for this painting tutorial called Watching Santa Fly Away. For this painting tutorial you're going to need an 11 by 14 pre-painted grey canvas or any size of canvas that you like. I'm going to start with my large number 30 filbert brush and I'm going to get it a little bit wet and then add some white. You can use any white you want. I've got titanium white and I'm just going to brush up and down creating a little bit of a glow of light in the center before we come in with our tree. So just simple up and down brush strokes, not a lot of paint and not a lot of water. So I'm just going to apply a few thin coats of this. And then I'll start coming in the bottom and adding the base of the snow down on the very bottom here where the little kids are going to be standing. And just by tapping a little bit with the end of my filbert brush, I can create that lumpy kind of snow look. Once I finish adding the last little bit of white, I'm going to completely wash my brush out. I'm going to dry it off and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of black and some sap green. And be sure to look below this video for the full list of all the colors I'm using. So just a little bit of sap green or hooker's green. Any warm green will work. If you want a cool green, you can use that as well. So a little mixture of black and the green. And then I'm going to start with the top of the tree. Just by leaving a little line on the very top, about an inch down, I'll start the beginning stages of the little branches. So I'm going to start just by adding little taps with the end of my brush. And then I'm going to leave a few spaces and start tapping with a little bit more pressure. Uh, using the full width of my brush going down the tree to make those branches and the tree gradually get wider and wider. Okay, so once I've worked my way down the tree, I'm going to leave just a little bit of space between the snow and the base of the tree. And then I'm going to pick up just a little bit more paint and I'm going to add it to the very bottom of the canvas, creating a little bit more depth and shadow. So a very small amount of paint right underneath the white and the gray on the very, very bottom. I'm going to rinse that brush out and I'm going to go down to a small filbert brush, take a little bit of my black and some crimson red, and you can use any red that you want. I'm going to start um, working on this child here that's going to be the taller one. Uh, and I'm going to make it look like he's wearing a hat, one of those little Santa hats. So. The hat will go down into a V and I'm just going to start by adding a circle for the head and then I'm going to go down and start working on the shoulders just one little brush stroke at a time because they're mostly in silhouette and they've got puffy jackets on and probably snow pants and boots you really can um, be a little loose with this style of painting you don't have to worry too much about getting everything really accurate and I'm spending too much time on details. That's what I really like about this and why I think it's so easy for beginners. Very doable for all levels of painters. So you guys all watching right now, you can definitely paint along with me. So just a little bit of a green here that I'm adding to some black and red. I know that they're complementary colors. However, you can use whatever colors you want or just complete, completely paint the silhouettes in black. I'm going to come over with crimson red now and then start bringing it down into a little V for where I'm going to have a little pom pom, which I'm adding a little bit of white right now. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white and add some more. And if it doesn't show up, I'll wait for it to dry and add a little bit more after. I know this is in silhouette, but I do want to have some of the areas here a little bit more visible. So you can pick and choose which ones you want to be more in shadow or more dark and which ones you want to be a little bit lighter and more visible like I'm doing here. Now because I really love the color red, and this is of course a Christmas painting, and red looks so nice with green, and we've got the green tree, I think I'm going to go ahead and add more of my red to the pants, and the jacket, and a mitten. So again, this is a very easy, easy step and process. Everything's a little rounded and puffy and a little messy looking, so you don't have to worry about painting fingers and all those little details. And then I'm going to go back and add the white trim on the hat. So just tapping with my white. I'm using titanium white. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that, but you guys can use any white that you have, and you can also use any red. I really love crimson red, scarlet red, and neon red by Holbein, if you're curious to know what shades of red and brands I like to use. Uh, I'm using 
Liquitex Basics Acrylic, Arteza, and Luminous uh, Neon Red by Holbein. I'm going to start coming in with the younger child now. It's going to be shorter. Everything's going to be smaller. And I'm going to start him again with a little bit of black and green. I'll be adding a little bit of red as well. You can really use um, any color you want. Like I mentioned, purple, blue, um, or some more gray. And it's completely up to you. I think this will look nice in different colors. And I'm looking forward to seeing your versions. So be sure to share yours on our Facebook group. There'll be a link below where you can join that. And Patreon as well. So I'm just going to go back here and add a little bit more red, building up that rich red tone. Um, no water at all on my brush. So where I want my colors to be the strongest, I'm going to use full-on paint with no water. So that's a good tip for you when you want to when you want to add uh, lighter shades. You want to add thinner coats. So it's going to be less intense if you just add a really thin coat, water down. Um, but over on the little, the smaller child here on the right, uh, I'm adding a little bit of white to the green just to make some of the folds in the jacket and the pants stand out a little bit more. All of this is going to dry a little bit darker. Once it, you know, once acrylic dries, it does dry a little bit darker. So keep that in mind where you want your colors to be the brightest. Make sure you um, go back to them later on once your painting is dry and have a look at it and you'll see that you might need to add a little bit more color. To make sure your colors stay nice and bright, a little tip for you is to apply white as a base first, let it dry, and then go over top with the color that you want to be really, really bright. So I'm going to come in and add a little bit of white trim on the hat on this side as well. And I'm adding a little bit of white across where the hat folds over and goes down into the pom-pom. And I'm going to add a little bit more red on top of that after to make it really stand out, to make it nice and bright again. And then I'm going to go around the little pom-pom and add a little bit of black. That will make it look shadowed underneath there and like the pom-pom is in front. Now I'll come back in with my red and you'll see how nice and bright it looks over top of that uh, lighter shade with the white. I'm going to add some shadows and make it look like his hand, his mitten is open and he's reaching out for something or perhaps holding a ball to place on the tree. And I'll just add just a tiny bit more shadows here just with muted tones of green, red, um, adding a little bit of black to both of them. And then I'm going to wash my brush out and we're going to start working on our Christmas tree. Okay, so washing my brush out, make sure you have all those colors out of there. You want a nice clean brush and you can use any size filbert or a round brush for this step. I'm going to use one of my smaller filbert brushes. I'm going to take some white and some neon warm yellow. If you don't have neon warm yellow, you can just use a soft orange. You can make it the color you want by adding some yellow and some white to it. I just want to create a, a nice warm light here uh, behind the tree. So I'm kind of outlining the tree here, wiggling my brush around, not being careful at all. You can be loose with your hand and your brush for this step as well. Notice how my light um, yellow I'm adding here is really, really soft looking. That's because I've got um, a ratio of more white than yellow, okay? So you want 90% white, 10% of that yellow because it will dry darker as well. And I want it to dry this nice soft gold color. And I'm gonna just graze their um, figures, their outline a little bit with this soft gold as well. So the, the light from the tree is hitting um, the front of them and we're seeing just a little bit around the edges. Um, if they're turned a certain way right, just a little bit, we can see a bit on their shoulder, their hand, their hat. I'm going to add a little bit to the base of the tree on the snow as well. And now I'm going to come back in and add a little bit more depth with the tree, the branches. So this will create a little bit more shadow and make our tree look a little bit more 3D. So once I wash my brush out, I go back in with my sap green and just a tiny bit of black, hardly any water at all, because I don't want this to be uh, really see-through. I want this to really show up and make the tree look a little bit more dense. What this is gonna do by creating more contrast and shadow is gonna really um, complement all the nice light that's going on around the tree, behind the tree as well. So it's gonna really make the light even brighter and warmer. So I'm gonna continue down the tree by adding more of that 
green with just a tiny tiny bit of black in there you don't need a lot of black at all it's a really really strong color and then I'm gonna add a little bit at the very very bottom of the canvas as well to increase the shadow there at the very bottom and I'm gonna add a little bit more to the child and I'll be adding um, the, just the bottom of his coat a little bit of black just to make his coat look separate from his pants though you could keep it just as it is and it might look like a one-piece snowsuit but I'll show you how you can make it look like a two-piece um, before I do that I'm gonna add a little bit more highlights here that warm golden light with my yellow and white um, all around the figures the base of the tree the snow and their waist around their legs you can add this you can outline their entire figures with this as well as the tree and all around the snow. Make sure you have um, the darker shadow on the very bottom of the canvas, right below their feet as well. And right here, I'm gonna just go right across, bringing the coat down quite low and adding those dark dark shadows in there again using black black and green or black and red any one of those combinations will work or just straight black okay with a clean brush my filbert brush again i'm going to take more white warm yellow and go around and dot and dab and wiggle to create and build up some more light on this tree I'm going to let the tree dry a little bit and I'm going to switch back over to my larger filbert brush. I'm taking a thin coat, so a little watered down black and white, gray, any kind of gray you want, just making it a little bit darker on either side, creating sort of a vignette on the left and the right. So just straight up and down and then a little fanning towards um, in towards the tree. So now we've got it a little bit more ombre, so we've got more of a, a gradation of light to dark. You could make the sides even darker if you wanted, apply just a little bit more black if you want, but I think it looks nice just like this, more of like a, in silver tones. So all I'm doing is just readjusting, softening it to make it uh, even more uh, gradiated. I don't wanna have any streaks. And then I'm gonna go and work more on the tree. I'm gonna add a few more details. So I'm gonna go over to a toothbrush and start creating a spray effect. This is gonna add um, more lights to the tree and snow at the same time. So with a toothbrush, titanium white, and some water, I'm gonna turn my brush over and I'm just gonna pull with my finger to spray. So you make sure you wanna aim it where you want that to end, end up and land because if you have anything around, it's a really messy step and you can um, accidentally get this spray on anything that's around, so just be very careful. So we've got a very light um, spray effect here for the snow as well as a little bit on the tree that will incorporate into some decorations and lights. With a smaller round brush here, a number two or three, I believe, I'm taking another uh, layer, or adding another layer, I should say, of my scarlet red, and then washing my brush out and going in and adding more yellow, warm yellow, and titanium white. I'm then gonna start tinting my white with orange and red and making more of a, a, a warm peachy tone here and I'll add more and more colors as we go along, but for now all I'm doing is just really gradually adding it um, in little dabs and dots, not concentrating on a perfect circle or like an ornament ball shape. I just wanna um, add little bits of color here and there, very soft and subtle. On the very tops of their hats, I'm adding a little bit of just straight neon red. I think that look, makes it look more like those velvet Santa hats. I really think this also helps to make that fold in the back of the hat separate from the rest of the hat. And then I'm going to go back in to with a clean brush with my crimson red, and I'm going to add little 
um, round balls here, um, just straight, crimson red, and then I can come back in and add some shine and highlights on those balls with some neon red, a little bit of white. It's super easy to create a pretty Christmas tree, and if you want to learn and see more Christmas trees and how to paint them, I've got a ton. So my Christmas and winter playlist here has quite a few different versions of Christmas trees, vintage types of Christmas, so many different winter landscapes if you don't celebrate the holidays. Um, so make sure you have a look through and you'll see something that you like there and learn a lot about how to paint it and um, adding a little bit of white here, just adding a highlight, so a little half circle, and then a little dab here and there, and just a little touch here and there of that white, as you can see, creates this shine. It makes those balls come to life and, and just adds that pretty glistening glow to the tree. After adding my little highlights on my balls, I'm going to wash my brush out, go back for more white, and I'm going to start creating some pretty little beaded garlands on the tree. So a few more little white dots and dabs here. And then I'm going to start adding these little beads going down in a scoop or a garland shape. So dot, 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 and then go down. They're going to kind of cross over one another, layer over, and this is really going to give it that layered look and like it's wrapping around the tree. So I'm going to go all the way up to the top of the tree and all the way down. Um, to the bottom. So this is really, really easy. This is one of those um, paintings that's really quite relaxing to work on. Now I know here I'm going to be going over some of my um, red ornaments. Uh, it, this also helps to make it look more 3D and real, but if you don't want to go over those ornaments, um, you can paint your red balls after or you can apply uh, more over top. So um, you might want to plan yours out a little bit ahead of time if you're kind of more of a picky person and you really want certain things to stand out. But I like the kind of messier look to my tree and um, a little bit more layered and uh, I think that it kind of, it's the way it looks all together at the end when you see it all together. So don't worry too, too much about uh, going over things. It's always going to look pretty at the end. And if not, acrylic paint is really forgiving and you can cover up anything you don't like and add more. So I'm going back for a little bit more of my neon red, adding a bit of white and making some of these ornaments. Uh, look a little frosty so you can make them look as shiny as you want by adding just straight white to your ornaments and you can also add this little bit of a frosty uh, sugar plum look by creating a pastel shade of pink or red and then I'm going to start pulling out into a star effect on the top of the tree so making peach tones and pink tones. I'll just start from the center at the very top of the tree and pull and flick out in all directions. And then I'll dab for the brightest glowing star with white in the very center. I'll begin to pull and flick in all directions with um, just a little liner brush or round brush will work, whatever you feel comfortable with. I place my pinky on the canvas as I'm doing that. Um, be sure that you're, where you're, wherever you're placing your pinky or your hand, resting it, is, the paint is dry underneath, of course. But this really helps to steady your hand and uh, it can really make a difference when working on smaller, finer details in a painting. So I'm just adding a few more layers of the white to build up to that nice glowing effect that we have here. And then we'll add a little bit more to the tree. And then we'll start working on our Santa sleigh and reindeer in just a moment. So I've got a dry brush with just a thin, thin layer of white. It's thinned out with a bit of white. It's kind of uh, and water and dry brushed here, just going over a few little parts of the tree. Um, creating a little bit more of a misty, frosty, um, soft look. And then I'm going to add another layer of white in the very center of my star and gently flick out in all directions. Once I've done this, I'm going to start working on Santa's sleigh. Now you can use any color that you want for yours. I want mine to be a little bit more in silhouette and far away, so it's not going to be intense with color. 
I'll slowly build up to a little bit of my crimson red and a little bit of white so that we can see Santa's coat and the trim, the fur trim on his hat and his jacket. So just creating a tiny little, it looks like a boot actually right now, or a skate. Just really simple lines here. You can be just, a, it's just about creating that suggestion, right? So you don't have to over detail anything. Don't think about it too much. Don't think about, uh, how, you know, do I, where do I put the antlers? How many legs are there? Less is more for this part. They're really, really far away. So it's just all those little dots and dabs getting smaller and smaller up towards the top of the canvas. The sleigh is a little, uh, about a quarter of an inch in width. And then you add a little scoop in there and a little curl on the end for the sleigh part. Add a little line to connect um, what the reindeer. And then I'm just going to start adding, a gradually adding a little hint of crimson red there over top. So it's kind of muted over top of that dark gray. You can do it straight in black if you want. You don't have to add any color at all. That would look really striking in this as well and really show up. And then, of course, like I mentioned before, I wanted to have a little hint of Santa in here. We know Santa's in there, but this is just a, a little bit... Uh, a little bit more so we've got the crimson red I'm just adding little dabs and then a little bit of white trim and then a little bit of black for shadow to make some of these edges of the sleigh uh, stand out a bit more and then of course we're going to be adding that sparkle all that magic Santa dust and sparkle at the end of his sleigh uh, coming out towards the tree and the children, which is really, really easy to do as well. I'm going to add a little bit more white here on the trim, the hat, and then start dabbing and tapping lots and lots on the end of the sleigh and just a little bit on the reindeer. Soften with my finger. It's a little bit pink there. And then adding just a little bit of a dry brush to blend that out to make it not as pink and just a little bit thinner and more transparent. And then I'll take just straight white paint on the very tip of my brush. I'm going to just outline that scoop for his sleigh. So just these little lines, these little touches here and there make a big, big impact. So less is more. And then just adding a tiny bit more of my muted red. So the, the gray, the dark gray with just a ton, touch of that crimson red in there. Again, not pushing hard with my brush, just adding little dots and dabs. And then we'll add the reins there that connect uh, the reindeer, just a little line, a little wiggle. Their legs would be stretched out. So see how just by adding a few little lines and dots and dabs here, color, shadow, highlights, you instantly just have that feeling, that sensation that there's uh, Santa and his reindeer flying away. Without this is real time. You, I'm not taking long at all. Not overworking anything or over detailing anything. I'm literally dotting and dabbing with the end of my brush, and that's all you guys have to do. The biggest part about painting is um, learning to let go and not try so hard. I think what happens to a lot of people including myself when I first started painting, was that we, th we think there's no way it can be that easy. There's no way a few little dots and dabs is enough. I've got to spend hours on this. I've got to do more than, than just this. Um, the secret is you really don't. And that's why I love showing you guys through my tutorials how easy and how quickly you can achieve a painting. It doesn't take months and months and hours and hours. We all watching can do this. Now that their hats have had a little time to dry, I can reapply my white to make it really pop out, stand out, and adding just a little bit more to Santa's hat, that white fur trim on his hat and uh, his coat and his sleeve. 
I'm going to come in and add all that magic Santa dust and glitter, whatever you want to call it, from his sleigh. Lots and lots, just dotting and dabbing and then tapping with my finger really closely together. You can use a toothbrush or uh, a paintbrush to um, spray with to create this. However, it's more controlled where I want it to be, so I feel like I personally have more control using a paintbrush for this. And I'm going to make it a little curly and whimsical looking by um, creating that sort of an S-curve shape. And then I go over and just soften with barely any paint on my brush at all to give it sort of a, a ribbony um, look to it. And then have it go towards the tree and down to the children. Um, and this painting is just about all done, but you can add more to this if you want. I've got so many ideas. I could have kept going with this painting, but um, I'm glad I left it how it is because I think it's it's nice just like this. Uh, but you can add presents under the tree if you want. Um, and a little bit more color to your tree too. I just finished um, uploading a brand new painting tutorial. Maybe you guys have seen it. How to paint a colorful Christmas tree. I've got a few of them actually and on my other channel too. I love painting um, winter and Christmas scenes. So there's lots of ideas for you. Lots of lots to learn from watching these tutorials and I can't wait to show you how to paint all of this. You're going to learn so much so be sure that you're subscribed to my channel and that you're tapping the bell so you get notified every time I post a new video and you don't miss out. Thanks so much everyone. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!